Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello student welcome to today's lecture In today's lecture we'll discuss how to write hamiltonian for many electronic systems and molecules if you remember we have discussed the hamiltonians of some model systems like particle in a box or harmonic oscillator and also a real system like hydrogen atom but in today's class we'll go beyond one uh, electron one nucleus uh, example rather we'll go to a molecular system and uh, and write down its uh, hamiltonian and while writing down this hamiltonian we'll also see that there exists another unit like si unit which is called atomic unit and how and why we need this atomic unit in quantum mechanics that's the topic of uh, today's discussion let us start uh, by writing down the hamiltonian of hydrogen atom so when i say hydrogen atom of course i have a uh, this picture in mind that i have a nucleus i have an electron so the hamiltonian will have a kinetic energy term potential energy term the kinetic energy term will have kinetic energy of nucleus kinetic energy of electron plus potential energy so every particle that we see here every particle that we see with a certain mass will contribute one kinetic energy term towards it uh, please remember the nucleus of course uh, has neutrons and protons but then we are not uh, concerned about the uh, the subatomic particles present within the nucleus so therefore we will not treat them separately we will treat nucleus as a whole as a single particle with a certain mass of mass of the nucleus so when i write down the kinetic energy operator so we have general definition of the kinetic energy uh, which is minus a square divided by 2m where m is the uh, mass of the particle so in this case nucleus and then the laplacian corresponding to n or the nucleus so this laplacian has d square by dx square d square by dy square d square by dz square where this this operator is defined with respect to the position coordinate of the nucleus similarly for the electrons kinetic energy we can write down where m is m e is the mass of the electron and this is the laplacian corresponding to the electrons position or the electronic coordinate then we have the potential energy which is a coulombic attraction between the electron and the nucleus and this is what we have obtained so we while discussing this hamiltonian we of course uh, separated this hamiltonian into since we had two particle syst system here we said that okay uh, we can define this as what we did here is that we separated this to uh, rewrote these two kinetic energy operators in terms of two new kinetic energies where first one did discussed about the overall translational motion of the center of mass of a fictitious particle with mass capital m where m is mass of the nucleus plus, plus mass of the electron so since we know that mass of the nucleus is much heavier than uh, mass of the electron so which is equivalent to mass of nucleus and so therefore the first term in in a in a way of speaking this is simply the nuclear translational motion the second term has mu which is the reduced mass defined as mn into me divided by mn plus me so when you see mn is so large compared to me so this term would simply uh, can be approximated as m of n and i have the the reduced mass is nothing but the mass of the electron so therefore i when i write this term it this talks about the uh, kinetic energy corres corresponding to the electron this term corresponds to the kinetic energy of the nucleus and this term of course we know the coulomb interaction between the electron and the nucleus so this is the uh, picture that we had for hydrogen atom now let us try to uh, increase the uh, complexity of our problem suppose i have now not hydrogen atom rather helium atom when i have helium atom i still have one nucleus of course the charge of the nucleus nuclear charge in changed from hydrogen to helium but 
I have now two electrons. So, electron number 1 and electron number 2. So, if I write down the Hamiltonian which is the energy operator of the system, I must pay attention to some things. For example, in general the Hamiltonian will have a kinetic energy term plus a potential energy term. Now, kinetic energy as I said that each particle in my system will contribute to one kinetic energy. So, how many particles now I have? I have three, one is nucleus, the other two are electron. So, so I have first the nuclear kinetic energy which is given as the Laplacian in terms of the Laplacian corresponding to the nuclear coordinate minus now the kinetic energy of electron 1, the kinetic energy of electron 2. Please note I have the mass of the electrons are same uh, uh, and then this is the kinetic energy and now we talk about the potential energy. When I look at the system, what kind of potential energies are there? Of course, I see that the nucleus is a uh, nucleus uh, will interact with each of the electrons. So, therefore, I have electron uh, nuclear interaction plus I see now there are more than one electron. So, therefore, there will be electron electron interaction. So, I have to worry about these terms now. So, when I write down V E n, you will see that this will be a an attractive term. So, given by minus sign. So, I am just writing down here z. So, electron nucleus. So, nucleus is here. So, I let me call it nucleus as z a e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r 1. So, r 1 is, is this distance minus z a e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r 2. Now, here I have these two terms and the electron electron repulsion will be E square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r 1 2, where this is r 1 2, this is r 1, this is r 2. The r 2 is the distance between the electron and the new uh, second electron and the nucleus, r 1 is the distance between the first electron and the nucleus, r 1 2 is the distance between the two electrons. So, now I see I have this these uh, terms, let us rewrite them. Okay. So, the, the kinetic energy of all the, all the electrons, so I express that in terms of a loop uh, sorry a summation. So, where i goes from 1 to 2. So, this accounts for these two terms and now let us look at this term. So, I see here uh, I can bring out this e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 and some z divided by r i where i goes from 1 to 2. So, the when i equals 1, I reproduce the electron uh, the potential energy between electron 1 and nucleus. When i is equal to 2, I reproduce the potential energy between the electron 2 and the nucleus. So, this summation sign works here plus I have this term e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r 1 2. Now, what we would do is that we would see that that we have in this case only two electrons. So, therefore, we have only one electron electron uh, interaction term. Suppose, we go to even more complex a system. Uh, instead of writing down the Hamiltonian for helium atom, let us say we are writing down the ham Hamiltonian for any atom with n number of electrons. So, when I write down for any atomic system with n number of electron of course i have i have i'll be still be left with one nucleus so therefore the kinetic energy of the nucleus still remains as it is of course the mass of the nucleus would keep changing 
and then we have the kinetic energy of the electrons. Since we have n number of electrons, I have now this term will have uh, will have n number of kin uh, el kin electron kinetic energy terms. So, here the summation goes from i equals 1 to n and then when I look uh, at the th third t uh, term here simple i equals 1 to uh, n and I simply have still the same term r i. Now, since I have n number of electrons, I will have some changes over here because you see when I had two electrons, simply two electrons, I had only one interaction r 1 2. So, if I introduce a third electron here, so I will have r 1 3, r 2 3. If I introduce fourth, uh, fourth electron uh, here, so I would see that I will have interaction with the new electron with all other previous electrons. So, therefore, there will be six number of terms. So, how would I do this? I have to now e squared for each term I will have e squared divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 um, uh, common. So, therefore, I keep them out. So, I have one summation i goes from 1 to n the other summation and 1 over r i j. What would I have here for example? If I say j equals 1 to n, so I will have a problem. Suppose let us see if I write j equal in this summation instead of writing here, I am just discussing what are the possible ways to write. If I write j equals 1 to n, so that means all possible values of j, I will have one problem. Uh, in fact, I will have two problems. The problem number 1 is that there will be a situation where j will become equal to i. When i is equal to j, that means I am talking about the electrons repulsion with itself. So, that that is uh, not uh, we do not want to have uh, such a term there because in that case the r becomes 0 and then the term uh, explodes. So, I have to forbid that j should not become i that is one problem that I must take care. The other thing even if I consider j is not equal to i that means, I am ruling out the uh, interaction between the electron with itself still what I will have is that if I vary all j, value, j values from 1 to n. So, I would actually end up in double counting the interaction because interaction between 1 2 and 2 1 are same right because they are the same two uh, same pair of electrons. Similarly, 1 3 3 1 or 2 3 3 2 they are the same. So, therefore, I have to avoid this double counting. So, one way is I can write j is j goes from 1 to n j is not equal to i, but then I am I am double counting. So, I must multiply this term with a half or the other way is to write that for all values of j greater than i. So, when j is greater than i is over here is written over here. So, if is i is 1 in that case j will be 2, 3, 4, 5 so on. So, for therefore, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 kind of interactions are taken care. When i is 2 now j has to be greater than i. So, therefore, it will not consider 2, 1 rather it will consider 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. So, this way I wrote down this electron electron interaction term. So, now you see there is a problem here is that when I look at this Hamiltonian this looks very uh, difficult to write. Other thing that I notice is that there are some terms which appear commonly. Let us find them out. For example, h bar this term comes too often the charge of the electron this term comes too often this 4 phi epsilon 0 this term also comes too often. And we have this mass of electron now mass of nucleus comes once, but this mass of electron comes a number of times. So, you see that we have these terms which are appearing uh, quite frequently. So, let us define a new unit system where each of this term is defined as 1 and this unit system is called as the atomic unit. We will discuss more about atomic in unit in a moment's time, but what we do is that we will use this h bar as 1, e as 1, 4 pi epsilon 0 as 1, m e as 1 in this equation and see the effect. 
So, when I write down this one first term, so h bar square is gone. So, I have 1 over 2 m n the Laplacian of the uh, nucleus minus 1 over 2 the Laplacian of electrons because h bar is gone, mass of electron is gone. My I have e square divided by 4 pi epsilon zeros are gone. So, I uh, uh, summation over i, I have z a divided by r i plus e square and 4 pi epsilon 0 are gone in atomic unit. So, I have i equals 1 to n j greater than i 1 over r i j. So, I see that my Hamiltonian becomes much simpler when I, I use in hat atomic units. So, this is the Hamiltonian written down in atomic units where where h bar e 4 pi epsilon 0 m e are all defined as 1. So, that the Hamiltonian becomes simple. Now, we wrote down the Hamiltonian of this system where we have for, for any uh, elect, uh, n number uh, any atom with, uh, with any number of electrons. So, we simply have to uh, keep changing the value of n where I uh, in this in this summation. The other thing that we should uh, notice here is that this operator sorry this operator does not depend on the electron. This operator the kinetic energy operator of electron depends on one electron. This operator depends on one electron because you see the there is a there is a nucleus uh, which is there and the electrons are moving with respect to the nucleus. So, therefore, this depends on uh, de this term depends on one electron and these terms have dependence on two electrons. So, these are two electronic operators, these are electron one electronic operator uh, operators and this is an, a nuclear operator, this depends on the nuclear degree of freedom. Now, what we will do is that we will go to a disc, uh, uh, we will extend our discussion uh, to molecular system. In case of an atomic system, of course, we saw that we have more than one electron. So, when we have more than one electron, we learned how to write those uh, Hamiltonians. So, now what we do is that we would go to a system where there are more than one nuclei, nucleus. So, consider a uh, some diatomic system A and B. So, it can be hydrogen molecule H 2 or a lithium hydride. Uh, so, where we have some A and B can be multi uh, electronic atoms. So, atoms A has Z A nuclear charge, Z B is the nuclear charge of atom B, mass of the nucleus will be uh, given as M A. So, mass of the nucleus is M A, mass of the nucleus B is M B and then we have n number of electrons. So, in such a case let us try to write down the Hamiltonian. When we write down the Hamiltonian, of course, we know that I have kinetic energy plus potential energy. When I look at the kinetic energy of terms, I have kinetic energy of nucleus or in this case nuclei because I have more than one nucleus and then kinetic uh, sorry kinetic energy of the uh, electrons. I have n number of electrons. What kind of potential energies can I expect here? So, for example, of course, V e n that means interaction between electron with the nucleus. We have V e e the interaction between one electron with another electron and the next term will come is that which was not present before is the interaction between the two nuclei for example. Now, you see when you talk about this e n or e e term we have Suppose, let us define uh, that we have n number of nuclei, capital N number of nuclei and small n number of electrons. When I form the molecule, this n electron, suppose uh, this, is, this is lithium and this is hydrogen, I am talking about L i h. So, lithium will have 3 electrons, hydrogen will have 1 electron, but when the molecule is formed, the molecule L i h will have 4 electrons altogether. So, once the molecule is formed, you cannot distinguish whether this electron came from hydrogen or this electron came from lithium, all electrons are practically same, they just depend on their uh, immediate uh, coordinate. 
So therefore, we have to write this keeping in this mind when we are writing interaction between electron and nucleus or electron and electron, we have to make sure that each electron is interacting with all the nuclei present in the system. So let us write down the kinetic energy of the nucleus. So we have since we have n number of nuclei, so I will try to write it in, um, in, in atomic units. So the So, here we see that this is the kinetic energy where h bar is uh, in atomic unit where I have defined h bar is 1, uh, 4 pi epsilon, I will define 4 pi epsilon 0 is 1, mass of electron will be 1 and uh, charge of electron will be 1. So, this is the kinetic energy operator coming from all the uh, nuclei. So, in this case I have of course, 2 nuclei. So, therefore, A will go from 1 to 2 in case I have more than uh, 2 nuclei, I still can write this one. Please notice here m a the mass of the nucleus, I am bringing it within the sum because of course, 2 I can keep it out, but mass of the nucleus should remain in the sum because this mass of nucleus will keep changing when the nucleus changes. So, where for a value for a certain value of a, I will have a certain value of m a. So, therefore, this term should be within the bracket within the summation. Now, I come to the kinetic energy of the electron. So, the kinetic energy of electron I have h bar square divided by 2 m e, h bar is 1, e is 1. So, therefore, I do not need to uh, worry about uh, mass of the electron. So, here i goes from 1 to small n and I have the Laplacian corresponding to each electron. Please notice the mass even if I write I can always bring this out of summation because it does not matter which electron it is, the mass is same. Now, I come to the V e n that means electron with uh, the nucleus. So, this is these are going to be attractive uh, interactions. So, the we have we have to see that there are small n number of electrons and capital N number of nuclei. So, first write, out, write down i equals 1 to n each electron can interact with uh, every nucleus uh, present here. So, what I have done here is of course, 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, has been uh, brought out, E square has been taken out. So, this should have z into E square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r quantity. So, e square and 4 pi epsilon 0 are 1. So, I have uh, removed them. Now, what I see is that I see that z a which is in this sum because for each value of a, I will have a nuclear charge which will keep on changing. And now, I have r i a which defines the distance between an electron i with the distance of a nucleus a. So, how many terms would I have? For each value of i, I will have n number of nuclear uh, interactions. So, therefore, I will have total small n capital uh, multiplied by capital N number of electron nuclear interactions here. So, this is the, the uh, V e n. Now, let us look at the V e e, which is the repulsive interaction between the electrons. So, of course, uh, this is going to be plus i goes from 1 to small n j greater than i, j uh, would go up to uh, n, but j has to be greater than y, uh, uh, i and 1 over r i j. So, we have seen already this term because electron electron interactions. So, now you see that for n number of electrons, we will have uh, this electron electron repulsion terms. Finally, the last term is the nuclear nuclear repulsion. Now, if I have two nuclei, of course, they will simply uh, repel each other. If I have more than 2 nuclei, something similar to what we have done for the electron will also be applicable to here. So, A goes from 1 to n followed by B greater than A goes to n and the this 1 over R A B, where R A B this capital R A B is the distance between nucleus A and nucleus B. And mind you again, here uh, no, uh, there is there is a uh, there is an important change difference. 
uh, forgive me compare this electron electron repulsion with nuclear nuclear repulsion electron electron repulsion has e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r i j so e is 1 in atomic unit 4 pi epsilon 0 is 1 in atomic unit so therefore i am left with 1 over r i j but here the nuclear nuclear repulsion would of course be z a z b uh, e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r a b and e square and 4 pi epsilon 0 have been taken out, but still I have z a and z b because I am talking about any atom uh, any uh, atom in general. So, I have now this Hamiltonian for for a uh, for a uh, molecular system. Let us say let us say I have water molecule. I have 3 nuclei and 10 electrons. So, here n equals 10 and capital N equals 3. One thing that we must uh, appreciate here for example, is that when I have these electrons moving around, the nuclei are much heavier than uh, electrons. So, therefore, we can actually separate the solution of the electrons with, with that of the nuclei. So, what we can do is that this is uh, the famous uh, born oppenheimer approximation, which says that you, you can separate, separate the nuclear mo uh, motion from that of the electron motion. When we do that, we see that we s while solving the electronic part of the problem, we can keep the nuclei frozen. So, therefore, the kinetic energies of the electrons uh, nuclei will become 0 within von Oppenheimer approximation and the potential energy of repulsion between the nuclear nucleus will become a constant within von Oppenheimer approximation. Within von Oppenheimer approximation, we see we can we have we are left with uh, these terms which are called the electronic Hamiltonian. So, these terms together are called electronic Hamiltonian which have one electron terms and two electron terms and a constant. Uh, just to uh, uh, give you a, a brief idea about the atomic units is that we have defined atomic units by defining the mass uh, as electron mass which is taken as uh, 1, the charge is electron charge, the length unit uh, so, we have we have to define mass, length and time. The length unit is given by the Bohr's radius which is 0 0.529 angstrom. We keep that one atomic unit. The unit of time is 0.24 attosecond. So, this is this is this is uh, uh, atomic unit of time. So, which is uh, the time that one S electron takes for one revolution and the energy of in atomic unit is given as Hartree which is actually 27.212 uh, electron volt. And in this sense, the energy of hydrogen atom in atomic unit will be zero, minus 0 0.5 unit. So, in today's lecture, we discussed about how we can write down the Hamiltonian of many electronic systems and also how we can write down Hamiltonian of a molecular system. We saw that while writing down the molecular Hamiltonians, it is very useful or it becomes very simple if we use atomic units where we, oh, we also discussed how we have defined atomic units and the value of these are different atomic units in, the, in terms of their SI units. Thank you for your attention.